since 2004, a radical experiment in the early years provision has been going on in Wales. At over 40 schools across the country, they've been piloting a new play-based curriculum for three to seven-year-olds. And from 2008, it will be implemented in all schools. Welcome to the foundation phase. Troider Hill Infant School is in a small town near Merthyr Tydfil. They're piloting the foundation phase in their nursery and reception classes, and this programme will look at how they're encouraging mathematical development. We decided when we found out we were a pilot school for the foundation phase that um, rather than work in isolation, it would be a really good idea to, to bring our early years into one unit. So then we decided to knock through the wall and create our nursery and reception area into an under fives unit. The classroom is really divided into two main areas. There's a, a quiet area um, with the um, interactive whiteboard is in, is in that area. And then there's the busy area where there's a lot of free choice activities set out and the role play areas in that part of the room as well. Uh, we have open access to the outdoors, which is one of the key features of the foundation phase, is developing the outdoor classroom, which, which we've spent a lot of time and money on the last couple of years. Um, and if the children aren't being withdrawn by an adult uh, for a specific learning activity, then they have a free choice activity, which is either indoors or outdoors, and an abundance of activities are put out for the children and rotated each day. We've got a target sheet out there with numbers of 5, 10, 25 and 50 and this is an aiming activity where the children can focus on a particular number and then use the beanbag to aim at that particular number and it's good for adding as well and the children can total their scores and it's a competitive game that the children enjoy doing. Which number are you going to try to hit? One in the middle, number 50. Okay, say number 50. <gasps> And then we moved on to the uh, number dominoes, where the children use that as a free choice activity, um, where they've got numbers one to six, and they uh, match the numbers and they work as a team, so they're developing their personal and social skills, um, team building skills, and, and just helping each other to problem solve um, the number dominoes. Having I I I made the decision that we were going to um, change the curriculum in Wales and, 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 and try and ensure that we benchmarked ourselves against the best in the world, we then had to look about well, what we were going to put into this curriculum. And we decided that we wanted to focus on outcomes so that children could move through the curriculum and as they developed um, a skill in an activity, that that was registered and they could then move on to the next one. So they'd be encouraged to um, uh, an extent to move at their own pace, but they'd be encouraged to develop to the best of their ability. We feel quite successful in what we're doing because they ha the school has had an inspection and the under fives were highly praised in their delivery of the foundation phase. And that gives the school uh, confidence to carry it forward. So we need to find the right numbers, so we don't just want to build any old wall with all the numbers muddled up to it. We want to put the numbers in order, OK? So if we get really stuck, look, we've got a number line to help us. A key aspect of the foundation phase is the lower adult to pupil ratios. At Troider Hill, this means that teachers withdraw small groups of children from their free choice sessions to do specific teacher-led activities. The day is set up into five 45-minute work sessions. Um, there are eight members of staff in the under five unit and there are seven areas of learning for the foundation phase. Uh, and each uh, week a member of staff is responsible for an area of learning. And then obviously we have a spare member of staff, so sometimes we double up on activities. What number would you like to do? What number is that one? That's six. Good, good. Go on then. Big down on a big ground. Hey. We're using a multi-sensory approach where the children are, are practising recognising and forming numbers using sand, salt, shaving foam. Um, we're using the water tray where the children can use the water to, to develop their number language. We're using all the areas that you can think of. There, there is a lot of forming numbers, but not necessarily pen to paper. It could be um, using the pens and using the interactive whiteboard to write numbers, multi-sensory approach, um, problem-solving skills, it, not necessarily sitting down and, and pen to paper, but it's, it's just whenever they're ready for it. Hi. 
lots of sorting activities um, go on in the, in the unit as free choice and as teacher directed activities um, and we use lots of sorting for different types of criteria but um, today the children were sorting Teddy into the colour so they had to match the colour uh, of Teddy to the colour tray that they have and then um, some of the children were actually counting their Teddies um, to 10 and beyond uh, quite independently. Good girl. We don't push the children to, to form their numbers, but um, when we know the children can actually recite their numbers to 10 and beyond, then obviously we introduce the number to them then, so they need to recognise the number, and then we move on to forming numbers. The system we've got now it, it is a lovely way of teaching, really, because um, you can allow the children to explore things um, and, and sort of come up with their own ideas. It just gives you a bit of freedom as well if they want to move something in a particular direction, if they've got a particular interest, you've got that freedom to, to go with that idea and follow it through throughout the week. Right, boys and girls, this week now, what is Tilly and Timmy's favourite colour? Green. Green. We've got some green things in our obstacle course that Tilly is going to cross, OK? But first of all, I want you to show me that you know where these positions are. Can you put Tilly on something for me? And where is Tilly? Can you tell me? On the bench. On the, should we call that a table, a jumping table? On the table. Good boy. I am bringing back. Bring in the back. hall, I was using um, obstacle course and um, to encourage the children to use um, positional language. So I was introducing it to them, but then letting them choose their own route across the obstacle course so that, um, and saying where they'd put the teddy bear. On the table. That's right, on the table. The foundation phase gives teachers more freedom to lead activities away from the classroom and using the outdoors to extend learning is especially encouraged. We've set up a fruit and veg shop in our eco village um, where the children have experience of buying and selling, using money, using the weighing scales, um, using uh, mathematical language. Um, and also bilingualism, as we, we speak about 20% of the day in Welsh as part of the foundation phase. This was a bilingualism activity where the children um, asked Mr Blythe and then the, the child who was the wolf, who had a wolf badge on, um, had a clock and they could say Eno Gloch or one o'clock and then the children were waiting for the wolf to say Amsa Kinio and when it was dinner time then obviously the wolf would, would chase the children to catch them. It's been very positive. They report that their children are happy coming to school. They also report that the children are enthused in their learning which is it's unusual to hear from parents. They are supportive of us. We meet with them many times. We keep them informed. And each new set of parents who come in, we keep informing them. So it is important that they know about the principles and practice of foundation phase. Some, some parents commented last year that, um, oh, she's not writing her name yet. She hasn't done this yet. And I've just said, well, that's because she's not ready. Um, same with numbers, the same with phonics. Um, our parents accept that. I think when they've got older brothers and sisters who haven't actually been through the foundation phase or may have been um, formally taught to write their name at an earlier age, they, they compare to that, but no, they, they've been very supportive and they understand the benefits. And they, they can see as the child goes through the unit that when those skills are, are laid down and the foundations are in place, that that child's learning excels rapidly. I think at first it was a bit sort of um, unsettling Ooh. because it was new. But I think parents are getting used to it now and used to the way. And I suppose for ch children who started from the nursery up, it's not so bad because they don't know, and the parents don't know any different now. But for the likes of us Ooh. whose children have changed their learning and like it's changed from when our you know, older children have, was learning, then it's more difficult Ooh. for us to get used to it. We've had very, very few concerns. If a parent does come to us to perhaps chat about the outdoors, the rainy weather, then we, we sit and explain and discuss the, the, the ethos. And 
every pen comes around to our way of thinking. It's getting used to the, you know, organising and make sure they got appropriate clothing for the weather because they are outside a lot doing activities in whatever weather really. I've only got one child and he's come straight into the foundation phase, which I'm very, very glad he's done. I feel as if I'm fortunate that he's gone straight in and I think we're very fortunate to have this in this area. I think parents' reactions have been interesting because um, when you first talk to parents about, about the foundation phase, I think many of them were concerned that um, their, 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 their children perhaps wouldn't be prepared enough inside the formal learning regime. But the experience of the parents and the pilots has been almost unanimously positive because they found that in fact this new mechanism, this new way of learning, this learning by doing, is bringing their children on in leaps and bounds. Today we're going to be detectives and we're going to look in this yard to see if we can find some of these 3D shapes. Do you remember these are the flat shapes? What's different about these then? And you can see all, of, and they are all around them, that's right, yes. We plan for LSAs um, as an area of learning a week. We tend, we, we know our LSAs very well and we, we're very fortunate that we've got very high-skilled um, LSAs. Um, and we, we know where those individual skills are, so we, we sort of best match an LSA to a learning activity for that week. Shall we go and have a little look in this yard to see if we can find those shapes? Yeah. What shape is that bin? A cone. A cone and a... A cylinder. Right, what are we going to do today? We're going to hide Tilly. And what Mrs Callum wants you to do... Can you see my Bebop robots? I want you to see if you can programme these robots. What can you tell me about this arrow here? Left and... Right. Down. They're using the outdoor environment with... Um, they call it little Bebop robots. Um, and they're fabulous for um, early years. They, it's using um, directional language to say which um, direction the robot needs to move in to find um, the Ted who's hiding in the eco garden. Um, but obviously, it's, it's also involving asking the children to say how many steps forward. So it's predicting, it's problem solving, how he's not quite there, how many more steps do you think he needs to take? Um, so it's sort of directional language and obviously number and problem solving as well. You're nearly finding Timmy. That way. You're nearly there. So which way do you need to go now? You're nearly, nearly there by Timmy. They succeed in everything they do in the unit and they know that there's always somebody at hand to support them. There's always there's always somebody at hand to work alongside them. So they they succeeded in everything they do and, and they're far more interested in the process of things that they do rather than the outcome, which is, which is something that we, we've wanted to promote as a school for a long, long time. We wouldn't choose to go back to national curriculum way of teaching. No. And um, if, if we feel that as teachers, then it would be hard to see any teachers, wherever they are, would, would you know, would disagree with us. We feel privileged that we've had the opportunity to be a pilot school. Um, and we've just, we've really enjoyed the experience. It's been a, a long journey, but it's, it's been a really valuable and worthwhile one. Yeah.